We have breaking news about a new drug that could become the biggest obesity medication in the world. And not because it's the strongest, it's because it's a pill. It's cheaper and it exposes how broken access really is. Welcome to The Downsized. If you're new here, welcome. If you've been with us for a while, welcome back. The Downsized exists for one simple reason. Lorraine, my wife, and I talk honestly and clearly about GLP-1 medications and what it really means to treat the disease of obesity over the long term. We cover the science, the data, the policy, and the real life experience without hype and without stigma. Before we go any further, a quick medical caveat. I'm not a doctor. My wife Lorraine is not a doctor. This content is for educational and informational purposes only. GLP-1s are prescription drugs and any decisions about starting, stopping, or changing treatment should always be made with your healthcare provider. Now, let me briefly tell you why today's news matters so much to us personally. My name is Christopher Durham. Together with my wife, Lorraine, we have lost more than 150 pounds using GLP-1s. Terzapatide, Zepbound, Manjaro. I started at 286.4 pounds, and today I'm maintaining at around 185, 100 pounds down. We did not do this with willpower alone. We did not do this with dieting tricks. We did this by treating obesity as a chronic disease and staying on medical treatment. And I want to be very clear about something because it matters. GLP-1s do not cure obesity. They treat it, much like medications for blood pressure or cholesterol. They work while you're using them. And for many people, stopping treatment means the disease can reassert itself. They can gain their weight back and all the corresponding comorbidities. That reality is exactly why today's news matters. Because once the weight comes off, the next question is always the same. How do you keep it off? If this kind of coverage is helpful, please take a moment to like this video and subscribe to The Downsized. We publish new videos every day, and your support helps us reach more people who need clear, stigma-free information. This morning, Eli Lilly made one announcement, but it contained two connected updates that matter a great deal for people treating obesity. First, Lilly confirmed that it has submitted its once-daily oral GLP-1 drug, or Forgolipron, to the U.S. Food and Drug Administration for approval to treat obesity. That submission formally starts the FDA review process and puts Orfoglipron on track for a potential launch early next year, depending on how quickly the FDA completes its evaluation. Lilly also disclosed that Orfoglipron received a commissioner's national priority voucher, which allows the FDA to review the application on an accelerated timeline. Now, none of those have actually been done yet, so we don't quite know how quickly that will come, but it's an exciting move. For patients, the takeaway is simple. This drug is now an active regulatory review. It's not years away. The second part of the announcement, Lilly released new phase three clinical trial data showing that people were able to maintain their weight loss after switching from injectable GLP-1 medications to oral oforglopron. Those two updates belong together. The FDA submission is built on the data released today. Before we go deeper into the clinical results, it's important to discuss cost and access as these issues are inseparable from maintenance. Lilly has said that if the FDA approves Orfoglopron, self-pay patients living with obesity would be able to access the medication through Lilly Direct. The lowest dose would start at about $149 per month, but higher doses would increase, reaching as high as $399 per month. That pricing escalation matters, and it needs to be said early. While $149 represents real progress, the highest doses are priced higher than some doses of trisepatide today. So even at launch, this is not a simple affordability story. It is progress, but it comes with real concerns. Maintenance therapy only works if people can afford to stay on treatment long term. Now, let's look at the clinical data behind today's announcement. The trial is called Attain Maintain, and it focused on something obesity medicine has historically struggled with, weight maintenance. Now, both Lorraine and I are in our maintenance phase, so essentially maintenance is that part of your weight loss journey where you have reached your goal weight, or what I like to call the center weight. So I've been in maintenance about 
six months. The rain's been in maintenance about a year. But I'll tell you, it's not a magical place. There's no unicorns that come from the sky when you hit your maintenance weight. It's really just the rest of your life. And it's that ongoing struggle. It's that, I wouldn't even say struggle. It's that ongoing work to maintain within a few pounds your weight, your health, your life. Is it easy some days? Sure. Is it hard some days? Sure. Would a medication like this potentially help? Absolutely. Most GLP-1 trials are designed to answer one simple question. How much weight can someone lose? This trial, however, asked a different question. After the weight is lost, can people keep it off? Participants in Attain Maintain had already completed 72 weeks, nearly a year and a half, on the highest tolerated doses of Wagovi or Zepbound. So semaglutide or terzepatide, as part of the Surmount 5 trial. Once their weight loss leveled off, defined as less than a 5% change in body weight between weeks 60 and 72, they were eligible to enter this maintenance study. In total, 376 adults across the United States were enrolled and randomized in a 3 to 2 ratio. That means for every three people who received orforgopron, two received a placebo. Everyone continued diet and physical activity counseling just as they would in real world care. Participants did not jump straight to a high dose. They started on 12 milligrams of orforlopron and the dose increased every four weeks until participants reached either 24 milligrams or 36 milligrams, depending on what they could tolerate. This mirrors how GLP-1s are prescribed in real world practice and helps reduce side effects. There was also an important patient-centered safeguard built into this study. If a participant regained 50% or more of the weight they had previously lost, they were automatically offered a rescue treatment with orforgopron. That means because patients were not left behind for the sake of clean data, this reflects real clinical care. That matters because patients who were probably on the placebo were not left behind for the sake of the clean data. Now, I've talked about this a number of times. I always hate to see people who are fighting the disease of obesity given a placebo. It leaves them out there alone. So what happened in this case was if people did gain their weight, they were on the placebo, they were given some more forklopron and they were able to go back on treatment. This reflects real clinical care and acknowledges obesity as a chronic condition, not a personal failure. This is a great way to go, Lily. I appreciate that. At 52 weeks, Lily reported that attain maintain met the primary endpoint and all key secondary endpoints for weight maintenance compared to placebo. Lily stated that attain maintain showed that orforgopron, the once daily oral GLP-1, helped people maintain the weight they worked hard to lose. So let's look at the numbers. Participants who switched from Wagovi to orforgopron maintained nearly all of their weight. Participants who switched from Wagovi to Orforglopron maintained nearly all of their prior weight loss, with an average difference of about two pounds over a full year. Participants who switched from Zepbound to Orforglopron maintained their weight loss with an average weight regain of about 11 pounds, while those switched to placebo regained substantially more weight. At 24 weeks before placebo participants were eligible for rescue therapy, the separation was even clearer. Wagovi to orforlopron showed a change of about minus 0.2 pounds, while Wagovi to placebo showed a gain of about 21 pounds. Zepbound to orforlopron showed a gain of about 6 pounds, while Zepbound to placebo showed a gain of about 20 pounds. So if you went off completely on Wagovi, you gained 21 pounds back. If you went off completely on Zepbound, you gained 20 pounds back in a year. In plain terms, the people on oral or forglopron largely held their weight. The placebo group did not. At the start of Surmount 5, average body weight was about 250 pounds for those on Wagovi and about 255 pounds for those on Zepbound. At the time of switching to oral therapy, average weight had dropped to about 209 pounds for Wagovi patients and about 200 pounds for Zepbound patients. After 52 weeks of oral maintenance, the average weight in both groups was about 211 pounds. That stability is the point of this study. Lilly reported that the safety profile of orforglopron in the attain maintain study was consistent with what they observed in prior phase 3 studies. 
The most common side effects were gastrointestinal and generally mild to moderate. Discontinuation rates due to adverse events ranged from 4.8% to 7.2%. No hepatic safety signal was observed. Now this is key because there's a lot of concerns around orals and your liver having to filter it out. So there were no concerns there. Orforlopron joins an impressive portfolio of obesity management products at Lilly. That portfolio appears intentionally designed to give physicians options to treat patients across a wide range of disease severity, risk profile, and affordability constraints. At the lowest level sits Orforlopron, with the least weight loss, the simplest form factor, and the lowest starting price. Above that is Trizepatide, which I've taken, Lorraine's taken, many of you have, which delivers greater weight loss and metabolic benefit at a higher cost and greater complexity. Pins, needles, vials. At the top is the upcoming drug, Retitrutide, which we've reported on with as much as 28% weight loss. It delivers the most dramatic weight loss we've ever seen in late stage trials and will almost certainly come with the highest cost and the strictest eligibility requirements. From a clinical standpoint, this gives physicians options. From a patient standpoint, it provides choice. Different starting points, different needs, different risk profiles, but those options only matter if people can actually access them and afford them. That matters when you look at the big picture. About 74% of American adults live with obesity or overweight. Only about 12% have ever taken a GLP-1 or what's coming to be known as an obesity management medication. That gap is not about motivation, it's about friction. Cost, injections, insurance denials, stigma, complexity. Now imagine a different conversation happening in exam rooms across the country. A patient walks in and the doctor says, I can help you with your weight and the conditions that come with it. The high blood pressure, the painful knees, the sleep apnea, one pill a day. It's easy. That conversation changes everything. And if that one pill a day is also affordable, they walk out with hope. This is why Orforglopron has the potential to become one of the highest volume prescription drugs in the world. Not because it delivers the most extreme weight loss, but because it removes barriers that have kept millions of people from ever starting treatment. Now we need to be very clear about the pricing though. While the starting price of $149 per month is a meaningful step forward, the highest doses go up to $399 per month. That is higher than some of the doses of Zetbound and Manjaro. So while this is progress, it is not the finish line. A pricing structure in which patients pay more simply because they medically need a higher dose remains a problem. A sliding price structure is not good. It penalizes patients for needing adequate treatment. It creates uncertainty and it undermines long-term adherence. We have consistently called for accessibility and affordability in virtually every video we make. For everyone who medically needs these medications to be able to get them. This medication should honestly be a flat $99 per month, period, regardless of the dose, every dose, cash price, easy money. And it should be covered by every insurance plan with a small and reasonable copay for patients who medically need treatment for the disease of obesity. Obesity is not optional, treatment should not be either. What today's announcement really acknowledges is something patients already understand. These medications are treatments. They are not cures. They help manage obesity long-term. That is why maintenance matters. That is why access matters. And that is why affordability matters. If Lilly executes on approval, supply, and fair pricing, Orforglopron could fundamentally change who gets treated and who no longer gets left behind. It makes these drugs no longer a luxury item reserved for those who can afford it. So let me ask you a few questions. If you're already on a GLP-1, would you consider switching to Orforlopron for weight and maintenance once the weight is off, or would you stay on injections? And what do you think a fair monthly price should be for long-term maintenance? And if you're thinking about starting a GLP-1, for the very first time, do you like an oral option? Is there a value play here? A little bit less efficacy, a little bit less weight loss, a little bit less money. How do you balance out the conversation with your doctor and, and your wallet? 
Will Orfogler Prime give you the access you didn't have before, either because of cost or because you did not want to take the shots? I want to hear from both groups, so put your thoughts in the comments. Patients should be part of this conversation, not an afterthought. This is an exciting announcement today Orfogloprine is moving for. We love to see more medications coming to market. We love to see more tools in the toolbox to treat the disease of obesity. If this was helpful, please like this video and subscribe to The Downsized. We publish new videos every day and we are building a community that believes obesity deserves serious, compassionate medical care. My name is Christopher Durham and we are The Downsized.